Thanks for joining the CC America podcast, where we are getting mentally fit through testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. We hope you enjoy the show. This is a live recording of the CC America podcast. Good morning. Good morning. Um, My name is Tamaria Jordan, and I am the host of the CC America podcast. Um, I know this timing is a little unorthodox for me. Typically, the podcast is on Sunday evenings, um, but I am doing this one now. So I wanted to come to you all regarding a very important topic, Um, but the show for tonight Um, the reason that I'm doing this is just to talk about, um, a word. So tonight's episode is called say word. And essentially it's talking about how the words that we hear, the words that we speak, um, and the impact that it has on us. So I'm excited to, um, talk about this topic tonight. I am recording this show live on Podbean as well. And yeah, so I'm going to jump right in. So hello, Uh, Mita, hello, Julian. Thank you all for joining. Um, So this is a live taping of the CC America podcast. The purpose of the podcast is to inspire the lives of others through service, dedication, and faith. And I always start out with prayer. Um, So I will start out with prayer. Lord God, we just come to you now thanking you for this day. Thanking you for an opportunity to start off our week fresh, to make an impact on the world around us, Lord God, to um, change our surroundings and to continue believing and trusting in you. Lord God, people are going through so much right now in this season and in this hour. I pray that you would allow um, each and every one of us to consider the things that we do in our lives, consider the words that we speak, Lord God, and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and order our steps. For those who are hurting and grieving, Lord God, we come to you now asking that you would comfort their hearts. For those who are battling COVID-19 and other illnesses, Lord God, we ask right now that you would cover and protect them, Lord God. We come against the spirit of infirmity. We come against the spirit of depression, worry, anything, Lord God, that is not of you. We come against it and bind it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you um, for each and every opportunity to wake up, to see another day. I thank you for the opportunity to record another podcast, and I hope, Lord God, that it would minister to your people and that they would be encouraged, transformed, and inspired. I thank you, Lord God, for this time of fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, So, yes, um, tonight's uh, topic is called um, Say Word. So it is a very timely topic, and I honestly was trying to figure out today Um, you know, what I was going to talk about. But I said, Lord, I hope that you will give me the words to speak and the encouragement for for your people and just in general. Um, So the reason I started the podcast was to inspire the lives of others through service, dedication, and faith, as I mentioned before. And you'll notice on my t-shirt, it says obedience. And this is supposed to indicate the over-sacrifice. So in 1 Samuel, Um, that scripture talks about how obedience is better than sacrifice. And so oftentimes we may feel like there's something that we need to do and we may not be obedient. Um, And I know firsthand, you know, how that feels when you feel like, okay, you know what, I was supposed to call this person or I was supposed to say this thing or what have you, and we don't do it. And then we, um, we wish that we would have taken the time to say those words, to speak to that person, to make that phone call. Um, so when we think about words, our words have power. Um, and as I was thinking about the message today, I was like, okay, I hope that you know the Holy Spirit would guide me in what I should talk about and what I should say. And ironically tonight, um, things kind of took a different turn than what I was planning um, to, to read, but Um, we're going to go to Mark 13. Um, So Mark 13, ironically, so I was looking up scriptures on our mouths and what we speak. And Mark 13, the actual title of that section of the Bible is the destruction of the temple and signs of the end times. And with everything going on, I'm sure we can all agree that there are some signs and there are some wonders that we are seeing. Um, But Now more than ever, um, we need the Lord. We need him for our our strength. 
We need him in everyday interactions in our work. Um, it's clear that we need him. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read Mark 13, starting at verse one. Um, and then we're just going to talk about it. So the destruction of the temple and the signs of the end times. Verse one, as Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things happen and what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is, to, is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter because those will be days of distress unequal from the beginning when God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, follow that distress. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, so I read from Mark 13, and um, this is something that may, many of you may be familiar with, and maybe if you aren't, um, it is talking about uh, the sign of the end times. Um, but there were a few things in there um, that made me think about the, the title of tonight's show, which is Say Word. Um, and verse 30 and 31, 
He says, truly, I say to you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away, never pass away. Excuse me. Um, so that speaks to the power of the words. Um, the word, when you think about God, the word was God and he is the word. And so when you think about the word, um, the word of God is what Christians, what we, um, what we believe in. We believe in the son of God. We believe in Jesus. He came to save our sins. Um, and it's not by anything that we can do, anything that we can say, but it's simply by grace. And I know for me personally, um, a lot of my life, I have lived as though I can um, win God over. And that's not how he works. Um, I, there, I can't say the right things. I can't do enough um, to repay him for the gift that he gave us. He gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. And so when I think about that, I think about the fact that, you know, he was able to speak the world into existence. He sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. Um, and when I think about the words that I speak, the words that have been spoken over my life, um, they have meaning and they have power. And sometimes I don't think we think about the power that's in the word. And even in um, the word of God in Mark 13, he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. Um, and the fact that we don't know the day or nor the hour when he will return, he says to be on guard, to be alert. Um, so his word tells us to be on guard, to be alert, because we don't know when that time will come. But then it also says uh, in the example um, that he gave, if a man is going away and leaves his house, um, he puts his servants in charge, each one with their assigned task and tells one to keep watch. So when we think about our assigned task, like I know for me, I personally feel like my goal is to inspire the lives of others through service, dedication, and faith. And I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do um, and how I wanted to impact my generation um, for quite some time. I would say that it was about 2010. Um, and that's when I started to get the idea about inspiring others. And so at that time, I started a blog, T. Allen Inspires. Um, and I did that for quite some time. But I always had a passion and I wanted to do more. And I said, how can I do more? And so God gave me the vision for CC America back in 20, uh, 2010. And so I actually filed the paperwork in 2012. But that, um, and I am stepping forward and being obedient to what I feel he has called me to do. Because like the man who leaves his house, if he leaves his servants in charge, he expects that what he has left us in charge to do will get done. Um, and at the end of the day, all of us have the same call in life, essentially, and that's to seek and save those who are lost and to spread the gospel um, and the good news um, of Jesus and our Savior. And so when I think about that, it's very clear what the word says about our purpose, but how we accomplish that purpose is different. So we think about people who may be on the main stage. There may be people who are actors, actresses. There are people who are singers. There are people who are teachers. There are people who are doctors and nurses. Um, so all of us have a different role to play in the kingdom in terms of bringing people to Christ. But in terms of like what we do and how we live is a testimony and an example. So when we think about the words, our words have power. Um, and that actually leads me to another scripture that some of you may be familiar with. It's from Proverbs 18, and it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what we speak, we eat. Um, let me say that again. What we speak, we eat. And sometimes I don't even think we think about it that way, but truthfully, what we say and what we believe um, a lot of times those things come to pass because the word also says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So those things are deeply rooted. Like uh, when you think about a tree, um, a tree's roots run deep. And so when you think about what comes out of our heart, 
that's when we can actually see what's inside of us based on the things that we say um, and also the things that we do. Um, so there's other scriptures that I want to um, that I want to mention with regard to our heart and our words. Um, so Luke 6 verse 45 says, a good man out of the treasure of his heart bringeth forth which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So the scripture that I was just mentioning comes from Luke 645. And it talks about what's good in our heart. And also if there's evil in our heart, those things come out. And when we think about words, I'll use a, a personal example. Um, growing up, I always thought that I was big. And big is a relative term um, because big means different things to different people. Um, Essentially, I was tall growing up, but I was referred to as big. So throughout my life, I always thought I was so large um, and just big. And I, I tended to be bigger than those around me. So or taller um, than some of my friends or even my family members. So naturally, I thought I was I was big. And so that was the term that I came to know is not a good term. Um, I used to really use that as a measure of like where I am. So when people would say, oh, you're big for your age, that's what I came to, um, to know about myself and to believe is that I was big. And so even when I was small, in terms of my weight, I thought I was big. And so because I had that belief, because I had heard big for so long, no matter what size I was, I always thought I was big. And now I can say I am at my heaviest. And now I really feel like this would probably be the definition of big for me. Everyone has their own definition of big. But again, I thought I was big then. And I look at my pictures where I, where I was and I look at where I am now. And I allow those words to stick with me. I allow those words to make me feel something different about myself. And I literally carried that on throughout my life. So um, way back when, and I don't know if about if 90s babies, if you remember this, um, but JC Penney's and some other stores used to call the, um, the bigger clothes, the husky section. And I was thinking husky, like that's, I don't know when I think of husky, I don't think of a positive term, but I just, it just sounded funny to me. Um, but essentially it's, it was the, the husky section. It was for people who weren't um, as small or petite. And so I came to think of that as myself throughout all those years. And now I look at where I am now and I literally have the same um, warped mindset about myself and my weight. Um, and it's, it's crazy because I allow those words, or I allow the things that people said about my weight from a child on up to impact how I feel about myself. And you are so right. I am up very late. <laughs> um, so I am, uh, tonight's podcast, we are talking about say word. Um, and I started with Mark 13, um, just talking about how the word um, will never pass away. And I kind of went on to a different place uh, for anyone who's just joining to connect the dots of what we say and the impact it has on our lives. So I was sharing how as a kid, people always would say I was bigger. And what they probably meant was that I was taller than the other kids. But because they call me big, I have associated big with myself. And I found myself in my life as I got older trying to shrink myself so that others will feel comfortable. So if I walk in front of people at an event or in a hallway, I tend to like crouch down. Um, maybe I don't sit, um, sit up straight or sit, walk with my head held high and my back straight and I'm looking forward um, and walking with a purpose. I tend to um, try to shrink myself so that other people will feel comfortable. And I realize now that a lot of that came from my past feeling like, okay, I am bigger than everyone else, so I need to shrink myself. But I allowed the words of people saying that I was bigger. Some people said I was fat. Some people said um, 
well, of course, if we went shopping, I was in the husky section, so I had to get the husky clothes. Um, big and tall section, um, plus size. I remember doing a fashion show and someone said, oh, I got something good for my big girls. Um, but the outfits really weren't all that cute. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because in his mind, he said, we were going to look really nice. And I looked like I was going to a, I probably looked like I was 40 years old in college going to a church convention. Um, and I just remember that fashion show. And I said, you know what? I'm going to work this suit. It was purple. I remember it. I felt like Barney. But I said, I'm going to rock it because that's what they gave me to wear. Um, but literally, those little words spoken had so much impact. So when we think about the creation of the earth, God spoke a word and the earth was created. Um, and we do know that the power of life and death are in the tongue. So when we think about word curses um, or even the words that we speak, sometimes we can speak curses or we can speak life. And so going into this week, um, I just want to encourage you all to speak life over yourself. And if there have been any word curses um, that have been spoken over your life to cancel those in the name of Jesus, um, because People can speak things over your life and you may not even be thinking about it. And someone can say something and literally change your whole trajectory. So someone can say something to you and then you start to ponder on it and wonder if, is that real? Like, um, how much weight should I give to these words? Um, and so when you think about it, ask the Holy Spirit to show you um, what to receive. Because I know for myself, I've said things about myself that I know I shouldn't say. Um, and then I've also received things from others that I probably shouldn't receive. And there was a scripture to, um, that I wanted to highlight. Um, so James 3 verse 10 says, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Um, and that's, again, James 3 and 10. And in Psalms 120 verses two, it says, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Um, and sometimes I don't even think we think about that. When we hear things, we just take it as face value. But sometimes it, it really is one of those things where we can just dismiss it and keep it moving. Have a good night. Um, but yes, it is. It's. Life is funny, um, and the things that we speak have a funny way of catching up with us, whether good or bad. Um, and we think about what we want to do, how we want to impact this world, um, the mark that we want to leave, and we all have a calling. And whether we know what that calling is or not, um, we have a duty to figure out how we can make the world a better place and also how we can be true to ourselves. Um, when we think about the words that we speak, a lot of times we don't necessarily consider them as being something that can really impact our lives. I think sometimes we speak words thinking um, to ourselves, like, okay, you know, that won't hurt. But then the more we speak to ourselves, either in a negative or positive way, those things do um, impact us in the long run. So when I've spoken to myself or spoken over my life in a way in which it speaks death, defeat, um, anything negative, essentially, um, any negative things I say about myself, eventually you start to believe those negative things. Um, and so when we think about this week and going into our future, really being mindful of the words that we speak um, over ourselves and then also what we say to other people, what we call them. Um, because for some people, that becomes their identity. Their identity um, is not found in a loving savior. It's found in all of the words that they've heard. And many people are walking around here and they are hurt. Um, and they don't realize that those words did impact them. I know as a kid, I would hear people say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I used to say it. And I would say it with attitude. Because in my mind, I'm like, you can say what you want to say. That won't hurt me. And sometimes it did. Um, and of course, I tried to put on a facade as though it didn't bother me at all. Um, but a lot of times those words stung and they stuck with me um, over the years. And it's things sometimes people will say that will literally stop you in your tracks and paralyze you 
to the point where you stop moving forward. So you think about, say, for instance, students, if you had a teacher that didn't believe in you and a teacher who told you that you can't be anything, you may have literally believed for a long time that you can't be anything um, or you can't accomplish certain things or you are better suited for certain roles. Whereas there's other people who had teachers who really believed in them, who told them you can do anything that you set your mind to. Those students excel. So that, again, is an example of the power of words. And even though it's not something that's probably talked about often, it happens. You think about parents. We have a very important role in our kids' lives. The words that we speak over our kids will have a lasting impact on them for years to come. Whether we are speaking life or we are speaking death and destruction, we have to be very careful with the words that we speak over our children um, and what they take away from that. Because something that is seemingly um, simple um, or something that could be perceived as a joke may be taken very seriously and impact the trajectory of someone's life. Because in that moment, they may not realize it, but it's planting a seed. And then imagine if someone else comes behind you and then they plant another seed that fosters that doubt or disbelief or whatever it is. Um, and then those seeds, they continue to be watered. Similar to when we plant good seed, that seed continues to be watered too. And in the word it talks about, there are some people who will plant, some who will water. I don't know what our, our like every interaction um, that we have in life, what the purpose is, but there is a purpose. And we have in those opportunities, a chance to inspire, to encourage, to uplift, to motivate, or we can discourage um, other people. Um, we can share messages of despair, um, messages that don't spread hope, that don't encourage, um, words that don't uplift. So when you think about the words that you speak, be mindful of what you're saying. Um, be mindful of who you're saying it to. Um, and also when you are receiving words from other people, ask God to show you the words that you should be receiving. Um, and another thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is sometimes people will come to you and they will say, I have a prophetic word for you. But if God didn't tell you, I'm pretty sure that he would tell you to. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, that it, there's anything wrong with prophetic words because I do believe in prophetic words, but I would just say, ask God to show you as well. Um, because sometimes people will listen to others and they will run with what that person says. But to, similar to the scripture that I just read, and let me pull that one back up. Um, you have to ask the spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to deliver your soul from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. Because in Mark 13, it tells us that in the end time, many will come in his name, but they are not from him. Um, and so we have to make sure that our spirit is right and that our spirit is open. Um, because I know for a long time, even with regard to my, my personal spiritual journey, I used to, um, I used to feel like other people were either closer to God or could, um, really impact my life more, um, because they were more spiritual or they had a better relationship with God. But I've come to know that that is just not how, how God works. Um, the same God that talks to them talks to me. The same way that they can pray, I can pray. Um, and so for you, I encourage you also to know that God hears you just the same. And if there is a prophetic word for you, he will tell you too. Um, so if you ever feel uneasy about anything, just ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and show you uh, what he wants you to see in that moment, in that situation, through that person, um, because he will. I um, mean, I do believe that. And I've seen firsthand where I used to wonder and I used to think like other people could get it, get to God faster than I could because maybe I had made some mistakes. But he's shown me time and time again, that's not how he works. Um, I can't save myself. You can't save yourself. We're saved by grace. And many of us, we feel like it's the works, it's the works. And I know for me, even with this podcast, it's more so an act of obedience because I have found um, that oftentimes if people ask me to do something, I'm on it. I'm quick. I'll get it done at work. I'll stay on late. 
when it comes to stuff for myself or doing things that I feel that's in my heart to do, sometimes it takes me a while to do it. And I'm like, why is that? Um, but somewhere deep down inside, it comes from wanting to please people, um, wanting to make sure that people are okay with me. Um, but at the end of the day, the only work that will matter is what I do for the kingdom. Um, meaning there may be people that God wants me to touch. There may be situations he wants me to avoid, or maybe he wants me to go into it. Um, but whatever that is, I have to be open. And I, I'll be honest, I haven't always been open. So I am just hoping that I can be a blessing to other people. Um, I used to always say I wanted to be blessed to be a blessing. I want to motivate, inspire, encourage, uplift. And when I'm not doing that, I feel like I'm not doing what God has called me to do. Um, and I do it just generally, just talking to people at work. Um, each one of us have opportunities to impact people, um, whether we know it or not. We can either impact them for good or impact them for evil. Um, it's a matter of what we choose to do and how we choose to use our gifts. Um, and so we've all been very, very blessed um, in that regard to be able to do that to be able to use our gifts um, for a mighty purpose. Uh, because as you know, the time is near um, and we are seeing things that we've never seen before. Um, there is so much despair, um, death and destruction all around us. But then at the same time, there's so much hope. There's so much life. There's so much joy. There's so much um, you know, encouragement but it depends on how we look at the situations that we go through. Um, so in terms of words, so earlier in Mark 13, um, when we read that, we talked about being on guard, um, making sure that we know that we don't have to worry. Um, in this situation, God told them that the gospel must first be preached to all nations wherever, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. And that verse, um, again, that's verse 10 and 11. Um, those two verses really stood out to me um, primarily because when I read it, I thought to myself, you know what, that, that's how God operates in a lot of ways, but we may not see it. Um, and some of that's because we are so distracted. I know for myself, I'm distracted by the news. I'm distracted by everything happening with COVID-19. I'm just distracted all around. And it's not until I take a step back and I say, okay, okay, God, what do you want to show me that I really actually get a chance to see and hear? Um, and not hear in a, a creepy physical sense that he's going to like speak down and, and talk to me in the middle of the night. Um, but that small, quiet, still voice, I do hear. Um, I remember very distinctly, there was one time I was driving and I had been so busy. Like I, like Martha in the, in the word, Martha was always busy. Um, so I was just busy, 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 doing all these things, going to all these meetings, volunteering for this, volunteering for that. And I remember one morning I woke up and I felt like I should slow down. I just woke up. I felt like, okay, I should slow down. And that day, I remember um, leaving the house and a thought popped in my head. And it was like, just because the light's green doesn't mean go. And I think I shared this on an earlier podcast, but just because the light's green doesn't mean go. I was like, okay, what is that about? Um, and I just had the thought throughout the day. I didn't turn on my music. I made a concerted effort to be quiet so that I could hear. And so during my lunch break, I went to get some food and I remember I was in Virginia Beach and I was on Damneck Road. And if you know um, Damneck Road, uh, I think the speed limit is probably 55 or 45 or 55, but it, it's pretty fast, um, especially if you're going from being stopped. So I was at the stoplight and the traffic was, um, was coming. Their light turned red. Most of the cars stopped. Um, I sat there for a second because I had the thought from that morning, just because the light's green doesn't mean go. I looked to my right, waited. There was a car to my left, a van, and they were looking at me like, why isn't she going? I looked to the left and I was like, all right. So I pulled out. As I was pulling out, the van proceeds to pull out 
And then a Ford, I think it was an F-350. I just remember a red truck. It blew the red light. Um, imagine if I had gone just because the light turned green. I probably wouldn't be here today. And I don't know about the family to the left of me, if they would be here. But literally, it was in that moment that I realized why I heard that message that morning. And that was what was in my spirit. And in my spirit, I mean, that was that small, still voice that was telling me, I need you to be quiet. I need you to listen. Just because you see a light that's green, it doesn't mean go. And God is always speaking. And so that's why I wanted to use the title, Say Word, because he is always speaking. He is always speaking words to us, whether we hear them or not. Um, and most of the time, you think about everything around us right now. We are so distracted. Um, and we are distracted because I think that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to be distracted because if we're distracted, we can't hear. If you think about distractions, when you're distracted, you don't see, you don't hear, you don't listen. Um, so there's so many things that happen in our lives when we are distracted. So I encourage you, if you have um, a lot of distractions, whatever that distraction may be, take a moment um, and ask for clarity and peace so that you can hear, so that when life happens and situations happen that you don't understand, that you can get quiet and you can get still and you can hear whatever it is that he wants to, to say to you specifically. And sometimes he does deliver that through other people. Um, but I will assure you that he confirms his word. Um, so another example, even this past week, I was feeling very anxious about a lot because there's just a lot going on. Whenever I turn on the news, I start to get anxious and worried. And I remember feeling very anxious uh, last week, actually. And it was a few days ago. And I remember feeling like I couldn't breathe. Um, but I was like, this is a spirit. Like, I know... Like, I know I can breathe, I'm talking, um, but I felt like it was a spirit that would, had come over me, a spirit of worry um, and fear. And it was the, the weirdest thing for a couple of days. I literally felt like I was on the verge of death and I couldn't breathe. Um, and I was like, but like, there's nothing else wrong. Didn't have a fever, no other symptoms. It just felt like I couldn't breathe. Like when I laid down, um, I just felt off. And when I was up, it felt like my throat was swelling, but it, it wasn't. It was the oddest thing. And when I took a step back and I realized what was happening, I started to get antsy and I started to worry more. And then I decided to turn on some praise and worship music. Um, and I ended up having a phone call with a colleague. Um, and then by the time the call ended and after my praise and worship, I started to calm down and I was okay. Um, but I think that was like the start of, of panic, um, just because of everything going on around us. And of course, when we're, when we're panicked, when we worry, when we worry about anything, it creates a different level of stress, but it also manifests itself in our bodies. Um, and actually I want to say that it's Matthew six, I'm about to double check. Um, but Matthew six, uh, says to us, if I'm not mistaken, not to worry, um, because I know for myself, I am a worrier. But in Matthew 6, verse 25, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? I have spent the majority of my 36 years worrying. And that's something that I am believing and trusting God of being free from completely. I have moments where I'm free and then I allow the spirit to creep back in the spirit of fear. And I don't know if you all have heard uh, the show that I did called Snakes, but that show is talking about spirits. And um, I do encourage you to go back and listen to the, that podcast. But us by worrying, it doesn't change anything. Whether we worry or we don't worry, whatever's going to happen is still going to happen. And I have to remind myself of that. But then I look at how he's taking care of me, even when I've worried. And then it happens. I, like 
I don't know about you, but there have been times where I've been like, oh my gosh, if this happens, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then when it happens, it happens and I am totally fine. And it's the funniest thing because in my mind, when it happens, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I don't think I could ever go through that. And then we go through situations that we didn't think we could ever go through or that we could never survive or excuse me, ever survive. And we do. So what we were worried about wasn't as big of an issue as we thought. Um, so I encourage you think about the words, think about your thoughts because our thoughts um, become actions and whatever we're thinking about, those things come from our heart. Um, as I mentioned earlier, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we speak out those things, whether good or whether evil, whether um, bad, um, positive, indifferent, we are the ones who have the power to speak those things. But it starts with our heart. It starts with what seeds do we allow to be planted by others and what seeds we plant ourselves. So if we find that we are planting seeds that don't line up with God's word, um, then I think we have to reassess and think about what we're saying, why we're saying it. Because there could be um, things that happened in your past that are sending you down that path. Um, meaning something that someone spoke over your life, you received it, and now you're walking in what you receive. So be very mindful of what you receive from others um, because not everyone has your best interest in, at heart. Um, and so ask God to show you, ask the Holy Spirit to show you when people are lying, when they are deceiving you. Um, so I know tonight I, I went over quite a few scriptures, so I'm just going to give you the full chapter so you can go back and read it and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. However, he's going to speak to you. Um, but Mark 13, Proverbs 18, um, Luke six and Psalm 120. Um, those are all of the, the scriptures that I, that I read tonight. I'm just double checking just to make sure I didn't miss any. Um, and then on my shirt again, you see obedience over sacrifice. Um, first Samuel 15, 22. And the reason that I wore this tonight is um, in that scripture, it says, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Um, so when we think about Saul and Samuel, Saul, um, if you a little bit further down in uh, 1 Samuel 15, he says, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the When we think about the words, the words that um, are spoken over our lives, when we think about the words that we speak to ourselves, what are we afraid of? Are we more afraid of people than we are of God? Um, and I have struggled with that. So like I tell you, he is speaking to me right now um, because he asked at that time, now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back to me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back to you. You have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. So when we think about our lives, we think about the word. God's word is the only word that will stand the test of time. In Mark 13, it said that that word will remain when heaven and earth have passed away. Um, and so when we think about the words that he's spoken, his words, we know are alive. His words will carry on. Um, but when we think about our words, we must be very careful in what we receive and also what we say. Are we speaking death and destruction or are we speaking life? Um, so speak life, speak life over yourself, speak life over your children, over your family, over your friends. Um, let what comes out of your mouth be good. Um, and just some other, uh, other scriptures really quickly. 
um, Ephesians 4, verse 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Proverbs 13, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open, openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Um, Matthew 12, verse 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Matthew 12, 36. So um, the, the term word curses, I know I was listening to a, um, a recent conference. Um, I had actually got the recording from Tiffany Montgomery and her first name is spelled T-I-P-H-A-N-I um, Montgomery. And she's on Instagram, Facebook. Um, she had, of course, you can visit her website, but awesome woman of God. In her conference, I was so encouraged because I never thought about the word curses that I've either spoken over my life or that I've allowed other people to speak over me. Um, so be very mindful of what you say to yourself. Are you telling yourself, I can make it. I can do this. I can beat this situation. I can be healed. I can be better. I can do better. Or are you telling yourself, I can't do it. You know, that'll never happen for me. If we believe and we say it'll never happen, guess what? It won't happen because we don't have the faith. And the word also says if we have the faith of a mustard seed, then God can work. But faith without works is dead. So a lot of times we want to say, you know, I can do this or that oh, I have faith, I believe, but our actions show otherwise. Because in our heart, we haven't exercised that muscle of faith. So as you start this week, just consider your words. Um, I know I gave you a lot of scriptures. I hope that you will go back and read them for yourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart how he needs to minister to your heart. Um, but I pray that you all will be encouraged, that you will keep the faith, and that even in these times of trouble and turmoil, that you will find that silver lining, that you will see the good even in the midst of so much chaos. Um, because there is a lot of good around us. The fact that we are breathing, that we are alive, praise the Lord. That's a testimony in and of itself um, because there's so many people who are not here today. Um, and God rest the souls of all of my family members who have been lost recently um, to COVID and other diseases um, in different situations and for friends and other people who are going through right now. My heart goes out to you. Um, and I just hope and pray that you would find comfort um, and that God would give you peace, peace of mind, um, that he would give you peace for the situations that you're going through, and then also give you deliverance and also build your faith, build your faith to trust in him, to trust in his word um, and what he says and really believe that because it's easy for us to believe what each other says because we see each other in the physical but you do have to have faith to believe his word and stand on his word because his word will never pass away. The things that we say, you know, people may come and go. And sometimes people just say things because they feel like saying it, whether they mean it or not. Um, so sometimes people are being honest. Other times, maybe not. But ask the Holy Spirit to allow you to be able to discern that so that you can see for yourself and that you can receive the words that he wants you to receive that you can do the things that he wants you to do. At the end of the day, um, we know uh, through the test of time that there are many generations that have gone before us. There may be many generations after us, but we, no one knows. In Mark 13, it reminds us that no man knows the day nor the hour um, for when the time will come. So we must stay on watch. We must be ready. We must do the things that he has called us to do. Um, and so that's why I am doing this now, um, because I want to do what I feel like I've been called to do to really encourage, uplift and inspire others. So I hope and pray that you've been inspired today. Um, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to your heart, whatever it is that he wants you to know. Um, yeah, just ask him to show you. He shows me all the time, new things. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, that was it. Um, and don't be like Saul. Saul was blessed and didn't see his blessing. And he said, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men. 
And so I gave in to them. How many of us are giving in to other people because of what they say? But we don't listen to the words God says. Um, we don't listen to the Holy Spirit and what he's trying to say to us. So just be mindful. So as you start this week, um, just be encouraged. Um, sending light and love to each and every one of you listening to this podcast um, and hoping that you and your families continue to stay safe and healthy. Um, and I hope you stay encouraged and you know that God is with you. Um, even when you can't see a way out of the situation that you might be in, he is with you and he cares. So I hope that you will be encouraged. I hope you will know um, that he has your back, that he is with you. Um, and I will continue to do these podcasts. Uh, my goal is to do at least two a month. Um, so every other week, um, primarily, I know some weeks I've been a little off, but I too need to be obedient. Yes, I am committed to being obedient um, and making sure that I am just doing my part. By trade, I am a trainer. So um, by day, I am working on creating learning experiences and training. Um, and after work, I consider myself um, like a personal life coach, encouraging many people um, who may call me, who may need a listening ear, who may need encouragement. But this is what I feel like I'm called to do, to encourage, to inspire, to uplift. And I hope that um, you feel encouraged. You feel inspired. I hope there's something that God will lay on your heart um, to allow you to grow and develop, but know that he is always near. All you have to do is say a word and he is he, he is near. Um, and I know for myself, the uh, what I said to myself today was kind of funny. I was like, all right, self, you need to do better. No ifs, ands, or buts, better. Okay. I need to do better. So um, I said that to myself earlier and I was like, all right, I need to do better in a lot of ways um, for a lot of things, whether that's exercising, eating right. I just need to do better. Um, it's easy to make excuses, to be afraid of what people will say, um, to allow word curses or things that people have spoken over your life to hinder you from moving forward. Like literally, sometimes what people say to us can paralyze us because you start to believe it. and God didn't, God didn't say that, um, but he will send people who are closest to you. Sometimes people you don't know. Um, that's how the enemy works. He knows the truth, but he lies to deceive us. So ask God again to show you. And before I end, I do want to read that scripture one more time. Psalm 120 verse two, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Because in Mark, th Mark 13, it told us that in the end times, there will be many who will come in his name. Um, it says in verse six, many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. Um, and let me back up. Verse five, Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. So no one includes yourself. Don't deceive yourself. So don't speak words over yourself that will deceive yourself um, into believing those things that you speak, um, whether that's saying that you're not intelligent, that you can't do this, you can't do that, um, you'll never have. Cut those word curses off at the head and send them back to the pit of hell where they belong because those are not of God. God says you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And not saying be cocky, but know um, who you are. So be blessed, good people. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I hope you find that, that this message encourages you, that it uplifts you, that it gives you some scriptures to go back to and listen. Um, listen to what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and ask God to show you. If you ever, if anyone ever comes to you with any messages um, or anything that you question, be okay with going to God and being like, okay, I don't know. Like I heard this. Can you confirm it? I promise you he will. I have seen too many miracles and experienced too many blessings to not believe, um, you know, in his word. But I struggle because it's literally like working a muscle. The more squats you do, the stronger your legs are. But when you haven't done squats for, for a while, 
when you go back, it's hard. And for me, push-ups, for instance, my arms feel really weak when I haven't done push-ups in a while. And it is hard. It's, it's not like riding a bike. It's literally like starting over. So when you think about your faith, sometimes you might feel like you are starting over, but if that's what you have to do, do it. But remember those times before. Um, And I did a a podcast before called Remember the Times. Go back and listen to that episode. But remember those times before where he delivered you and he brought you out. Keep that at the forefront of your mind. And don't allow negativity, negative words, negative experiences to stop you from going higher. Be blessed and have a good night.